so uh, this is another shout out before I start the actual book review so I took a class about slave and neo-slave narratives and about halfway through the semester my teacher decided that we had to get rid of some stuff because it was too much to read in one semester we read like 13 books or like the class read 13 books because I didn't finish Underground Railroad. Um, favorite book of that class was probably Deso Rose. I found Beloved to be disgusting. There's this other book called The Known World. It is the one that we did not get to read. And I'm really happy that she removed it because I tried to read it by myself. And in my opinion, Edward P. Jones is not a good writer. I don't know if the rest of his books are like this or if it's just this one. If the rest of his books are like this, then that's awful. But if it's just this one, then this was a bad place for me to start because I don't think I'm ever going to read another one of his books ever again. So the concept is good. There was a black slave owner, which lots of black people don't like to remember happened, but there were. There were black slave owners. And, and, man, so, I don't even remember the name of the guy, I, man, <sighs> anyway, um, so, like, Henry Townsend, that's his name, because I just looked at my notes, he's the black slave owner, his parents were slaves, they bought their freedom, but their son was still a slave, and he was able to get his freedom, and their slave master, I think, gave him some land. I don't remember. Um, and, and, I just, I didn't fit, this is one of the books I didn't finish. It's one of two books so far that I have not finished. I'm gonna try not to do this again, but I, for the life of me, cannot finish this book. He changes perspectives in the middle of paragraphs and doesn't always separate new dialogue with paragraph changes. I mentioned this one in the first video. And there are things that happen that don't feel important. Like, he just mentions them for no reason. Like, one of them, um, Caldonia, Henry's widow. He, did I not mention that Henry got killed? Henry got killed. But Caldonia, who is Henry's widow, has a twin brother named Calvin. And Calvin is gay. At least it's implied that he is. Okay. And, like, the, there's a lot of, like, slave imagery in this, but I, like, there's that whole, like, thing with, like, like, the main slave that we're following, um, his name was Moses, and I just, uh, I don't, I don't know, like, I don't think the book is bad, though, like, I will say that. I don't think that the book is bad because I didn't finish it, so it's not, it's kind of not fair for me to say that the book is bad because the concept in and of itself is fine and like I'm sure if I finished it the characters would also be fine. It's just, it's mostly the formatting. I would have been able to finish it if the formatting wasn't so atrocious. Like the other book that I didn't finish reading, that book's formatting was fine, so it goes on the list. But. I didn't get through enough of the known world to really judge it as a book because the formatting was so bad. So there you go. I spent four minutes talking about this one book that this it's not even about. Anyway, this episode is actually about a book called Nora and Kettle, which is an adorable book. So the basic plot of the book is that um, Nora is a privileged white girl who is about to turn 19 and she can get her inheritance when she turns 19, 18, I don't remember. When she's actually an adult, she can get the inheritance that her mother left her. Her mother tripped down the stairs and she is now dead. Her father is an abusive asshole. She's got this little sister that she's trying to protect named Frankie. Frankie is deaf in one ear because a beating from their father was so bad when she was a baby that she's now deaf in one ear. Frankie is kind of just doing what a child does and she's kind of hyper and doesn't really understand like why they have to be quiet, when they have to be quiet, because she's a little kid. That's how little kids are sometimes. And um, 
Really, Nora just wants to protect her sister. Like, she's very unhappy. Once their mom dies, their dad pulls, pulls them out of school and is now homeschooling them. But, I mean, that's really all that's happening. Uh, Kettle is a Japanese-American who... Um, it's implied that their parents are either dead or like they died in the war or something like that i'm not entirely sure and he and his brother i don't know if it's his real brother but he and his brother ran away from their foster parents in the orphanage because they just it just wasn't good for them and they're on the street and they're taking care of a bunch of um orphan children or at least children who are living on the streets and their group is called kings Kettle is not his actual name, but I don't know what his actual name is. All of his flashback scenes, I didn't really absorb very much of them. Um, their stories in are like separate from most of the book, but they intersect a couple of times. Like Nora, no, Nora and, and Frankie are like out and about, and Kettle and his brother, like or at least his brother, his brother like hits on Nora a little bit because she's a rich white lady and he's just like playing. There's a part where. Um, Kettle's brother is like sick and they're at the train station but Nora's also at the train station trying to run away and she collapses and everybody pays attention to her instead of him because she's a white lady and he's a Japanese American in the 1950s. Um, but the two of them start actually interacting when uh, Kettle pulls her out of a window. So at some point in the story, Nora starts dropping her mother's things out the window because it's like her own little act of rebellion against her father. So she's dropping her stuff out the window and Kettle is finding it because he's staying in the alley beside her house and he pulls her out the fucking window and it's amazing. Um, and then uh, the reason Nora was at the train station was because she was trying to run away. So Christopher found her, her father, and now there's cops outside their house. So Nora and Kettle get chased by the cops. It's pretty intense. But um, they're able to get away and Kettle takes Nora to the Kings where she can stay and like she'll have new clothes and stuff like that. And everything should be fine. Except, oops, Nora's little sister, Frankie, she can't stay there by herself. So she decides that she's going to go back so that she can try and save Frankie and also take her to live with the Kings because that's how bad her dad is. Nora would rather live on the street with these people who have to forage for work and going to work every single day for Kettle is a struggle than um, live with her father in like a house and like have normal, have regular supply of food and things like that. That's how bad the abuse is. Um, so she goes back and finds out that Frankie says that he sent, says, that Christopher says that he sent Frankie to live with relatives and these relatives are a secret because um, Nora doesn't know very much about her father's family or even her mother's family. So she demands that Christopher tell her where Frankie is. Christopher says, no, you need to come home permanently right now. Nora says, no. Then Kettle shows up and because Christopher is about to start beating on Nora again. So Kettle shows up and he gets in the way and he start, Christopher starts fighting with him. And then Nora takes a picture of it because her father is a lawyer for Japanese Americans. So it would look really bad if he was beating up the people who he was supposed to defend. But you know, police brutality and all that. Anyway, um, so uh, using that picture, Nora, Nora blackmails her father into giving her the address of where Frankie is so that she can find him find her and she also when she turns 18 and gets her inheritance she wants to leave and take care of Frankie and help Ke Kettle <coughs> excuse me and I have no editing skills and I don't know if any of my friends have editing skills I haven't bothered to ask them so y'all just gonna have to deal um and uh like they leave that that's kind of it Nora says that if if the address isn't right, then she's going to release the, the picture to the press, and that's not going to look good. So, few points of interest. The setting. It took me a second to realize that it was the 1950s, because I couldn't understand why Kettle and his brother were so hated, until I realized that Kettle is a Japanese American, and this takes place after World War II. So, this bit of history, America put Japanese Americans and people from Japan in general into internment camps and there are lots of World War II vets who don't like Japanese Americans. There are lots of Americans who don't like Japanese Americans. 
Um, so it took me a second to realize that all of the homeless children in the Kings are Japanese Americans. No one's taking care of them because it's the 1950s. <laughs> um, Nora and Kettle are going to fall in love, obviously. You can even see it in the title of the second book. Um, Nora's also using the nickname Kite when she runs away from home. I forgot to mention that, but she is. Um, I've never read a book like this. This is the third point. I've never read a book like this where there's um, two separate stories happening and they're intersecting. Like, I have read Game of Thrones, but, like, that kind of doesn't count because, like, Sansa has a scene and Arya has a scene, but, like, their scenes, at least in the first book, until Ned dies, they overlap and, like, Sansa will be in Arya scenes and Arya will be in Sansa scenes and stuff like that. So, I mean, and also all their stories are being impacted by all of the same factors. Like, they all kind of come from the same place. Um, but yeah, I didn't know that that was happening. I didn't really care for the flashbacks, as I said. Like, I get their purpose, like, to give exposition on kettle i don't really care for them um i want frankie to be okay if frankie dies i'm gonna be really angry but i will understand why uh, uh i just don't i just want her to live because she's an innocent child and i don't like it when innocent children get killed but sometimes in media that happens and actually if frankie died it wouldn't really be shock value i don't think i think it would make still make sense in the course of the story because christopher wants to hurt Nora to bring her home um, I still want Nora to out her father also, even if she doesn't, if she ends up finding Frankie and she was exactly where Christopher said she was, I still want Nora to out her father, cause he an asshole, and assholes deserve to be punished. <laughs>